<laughs> All right, we've got the trailer loaded up. We're gonna go and pick up a new 4x4 ATV. This one, the plow is a little bit too small for it, so we're gonna go check out an Articat 400 and see if we can replace this one as our uh, plowing machine. We've got about a 44 minute drive here, so let's hit the road and see if this thing's worth it. It's uh, up for 1900 bucks, and uh, he said it's been sitting for a while and doesn't run, so we'll see. Uh, just filling up the old truck here. We're at, what? what's the price there? 409 for gas right now per gallon. So that's gonna be an expensive one. Probably 75 bucks, 80 bucks maybe. We'll see. All right, 72.92 total cost. All right, we're about 20 or 19 minutes away. So we're getting closer here. So the ad said that uh, he tried to start it, but the battery was dead. And he said it needs a carb clean as well. He said it was his dad's four wheeler. And uh, that's pretty much all I know about it. So we'll take you guys with. Um, maybe I'll take the camera with, we'll see. And we'll check it out and just see if it's worth buying. Um, hopefully it is. He said the lowest he would go is $16.50 on it. It was up for $19. So I'm thinking it should be an easy fix, carb clean. And um, that should pretty much be it in a battery. And we shouldn't have an issue, but if we do, that's not gonna be the greatest deal. <laughs> so it's definitely taking a risk here, but gotta risk it for the biscuit. So I'll update you guys once we have in the back. Hopefully we hopefully we can get the price down a little bit more. We'll see. Alright, we got the wheeler in the back there. So it's it's not in that bad shape. It's a 2006 and the plastic's not a single crack in the plastic, so it looks cosmetically pretty good. There's a little crack in the gas tank um, gauge, but other than that, it's pretty much perfect cosmetically. Just needs to be cleaned up. There's some stickers on there and crap like that, but really it's not that bad. And uh, it pulls over fine. The battery was dead when it got there. Um, it lit up, the neutral light and reverse light lit up, but as soon as you hit the start button, it just clicks. You can tell it's really, really low on battery. Um, but yeah, everything else is looks pretty good. Um, it's all time 4x4, four four, so there's that, and then there's neutral reverse, so not much to it. It should be an easy fix, hopefully, <laughs> fingers crossed. We'll get it back home and uh, start working on it. There it is, back there. Alright, it's the next morning. There's Vinny out there, playing in the yard. You can see him. Right there, here he comes. <laughs> He's ready to go work on a four-wheeler. What are you doing? <laughs> All right, here it is. First look. It's got a winch and a plow on it. Plow's broken in a couple spots, but it's a pretty big plow, which is what I need for this driveway. I need a pretty big plow. Overall, you can see no cracks in the plastic or anything. I think this might be the cheaper version. There's no speedo gauge. But we'll get her off the trailer. Take a closer look at her in the garage. All right, we got the beast inside. As you can see, pretty clean for $16.50. Looks like it was left outside quite a bit of days. Um, you can see there's some rust on the brackets here. You know, like the sticker, I think it was like last registered. It looks like 2019 maybe, or 2009. Um, the stickers are kind of faded. But the plastics look pretty nice. Plow is a little rough. You can see some mold growing on the plow, so. It's definitely been left outside. Headlights are faded, but all that stuff can be cleaned up. You can see it's just, just really dirty. Tires are pretty good, tread's pretty decent. Wheels look nice. Seat looks really, really nice. Looks like it was newly recovered. 
Pipe looks decent, a little rusty, but we can paint that up. Footwells look nice. So it's not a bad machine. But um, you can see this is where the gas gauge had the crack and he said you just put uh, some silicone over it just to prevent water from getting in the gas tank. So this model didn't come with the speedo gauge or tack gauge. Um, it's just got the lights up here so I think it was probably the cheaper version. But uh, let's just see what happens when we try to start this thing up. So the lights turn on. You can see the headlights are really, really dim. And the oil light is on. I think that automatically comes on. And the start button, you can hear it clicking. Kind of. So, obviously dead. I don't even think the winch works, let's see. No. So definitely needs a good jump here. It's got one brake, the front here. There's not another brake on the other side. Um, here's one for the foot brake. Feels like that might be locked up. Oh, maybe not. Looks like that might be working. Cool. And then the gas on and off. Does that turn? It's a little, a little stuck too. So, definitely a little sticky. It's got a worn winch on it. It's got neutral high and low. So it's nice that it has the low option on this thing. Let's see the back over here. It's got a place for a hitch, which is nice. And I think that's pretty much it. I mean, there's not much more going on with this thing. That's the drive shaft right there, pretty simple. Coming directly out of the engine, right to the diff here. So. Pretty easy, simple, not overcomplicated. I like that. And the, the silencer can come off with the two springs right there. So very easy to work on. So, so far I'm liking the design that Articat went with here. Very simple, not too complicated. Um, here's the battery. We'll have to charge that up and see if it charges, takes a charge. Fuse box right there. Again, nice and simple. Air filter. Super simple here. Not too much to it. Just got a cheap uh, air filter in there, which is better than nothing. Is it connected on there pretty tight? Yeah. And then the carburetor's right there on this thing, so not too hard to get to. Yeah, and then it does pull over. So there is compression there. So I think all it really needs is a carb clean, maybe a new spark plug, and probably an oil change. So let's quick check out the oil. It says 2,990 milliliters going here, so Three quarts of oil it takes, it's a lot. <laughs> you licking the tires? What are you licking the tires for? Checking them out, see if they have good tread? Yeah, he's a weird dog. All right. Oh, that came off pretty easily, so somebody checked the oil at one point. There should be a dip stuck in here. Ooh, looks pretty black. Hopefully there is. This is all the way up. Just looks, nah, it doesn't look too bad. But I'm guessing that's gonna be pretty black. I'm gonna go ahead and drain that. And we'll get a new filter as well. The filter, you can see, is right over here. So again, pretty easy to get to. Not too complicated. Everything's kind of right out in the open, which I love. Easy to work on. And then you can see the spark plug is right here. So again, easy access to the spark plug. All right, we'll get our jumper hooked up here. Do a quick test on it. See if it does anything when we turn it on here. All right, 
Let's see if it lights up a little bit more. Oh yeah, there we go. Let's see if it starts up. I think it's right here. It started right up. Tail light works. Foggy. It's really boggy. She definitely needs a carb clean, but she fired right up. Not bad. Not bad at all. All the lights seem to work. That's awesome. So at least she starts. That's that's a good start here. <laughs> so let's see. Oh man. Look at all that. Benny, get out of there. Bunch of mouse nests. Benny. Where was that? Where did that come from? That might be why it's not running, right? All by the battery here. It all blew out of there. Huh, let's get that cleaned up. I can smell like dead mouse. Vinny, don't eat that. Vinny got a piece of the mouse. <laughs> How'd that taste, bud? Not very good, I bet. We got it all cleaned up. Um, I think it's coming out of this tube right here. So you can see it's going to the engine. And I think it puffed out something there. Actually, it's going to the clutch area right here. So we don't want that full of crap. So let's just take that off and see if stuff is coming out or we can actually try starting it up and seeing if uh, stuff comes out of there. Let's just take a look. You guys see the mouse pop out of there? What the heck? There's a mouse! There's an actual live mouse right there. What the heck? Holy crap. <laughs> there was an actual mouse living in there. That's crazy. Where the heck did it go? <laughs> That's never happened before. Ever. That's insane. Where the heck did that buddy go to? Vinny, where'd the mouse go? Holy cow. Maybe we'll wheel this sucker outside. Try to get it to go out, go outside here. All right, I think I saw it over here. I just saw him. Run by here. Oh, there he is. There's the mousy mouse. 
He was inside the uh oh there he is. Where is he going now? He's scared. Oh he's trying to he's trying to get away. Look at him. Oh he doesn't know where to go. Well don't go in there, bud. Alright, well that was exciting, wasn't it? <laughs> Did you see the mouse man? Yeah. So, I think what we're going to do now, since that's cleared out down there, I think we're going to clean out the carburetor. Looks like we have to get these plastics off. I think the gas sank off. And uh, we should be able to get that carburetor out of there. But the mouse made its way outside, so at least it's out of the garage. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've never had a live mouse before. I've had dead mice in there, but never a live one. So, that was new. That was uh, a new experience for Vinny and I. <laughs> Alright bud. So let's get working on this, see if we can get that carb clean. Alright, gas tank was a pain to get out. So these plastics don't come out of here. You can see. You have to take off the whole back plastics to get those off, which I'm not doing. So we had to just pry that out of there. And uh, that was not easy. And then, this plate over the carburetor is welded on. It's like, why would they do that? Just make it bolted on. So you can take it off. I don't get that. Why would they weld it on? So now I think you have to take off this plastic anyway to get the carburetor out. We'll see if we can pry it out of there, but... Alright, so we finally got the carburetor out. We had to take the air box out and then pull the carb out through the back. And that seemed like it was the easiest way to get that out. So if you guys have one of these, I would go about doing it that way. Ah, it seems nice and tight in there. That's good. Tiny starter for this machine, too. Kind of weird, but that was so far the only design flaw in the whole machine. I like the way the carburetor came off, that was easy, so that was good. It does have an automatic choke on this thing right here, which who knows if that's working or not. Hopefully, it is. Let's tear this thing open and see what's going on on the inside. All right, let's get this carburetor open. I'm just smelling in the garage mouse pee now, so there's definitely still a mouse nest in there, I bet. We'll have to get that out, but anyway, let's get the carburetor open here, let's see if the pilot jet was clogged, and possibly the main jet. Hopefully it is, otherwise, I don't really know what's going on with this thing. Doesn't look that dirty. A little bit of crud at the bottom of the bowl. Looks like old gas here. Nothing too bad. Maybe the petcock was clogged. We'll have to check that out too. the starter jet. And that is clear. Main jet. I'm gonna take the pull. That's what this looks like. That's clear too. Uh oh. The guy said all it needed was a carb clean, so. Two, about two and a half, so that's right. There's a spring for that one. All right, let's get that pilot out of there. It's really in there. All right, so the pilot jet was clear as well. So, I don't know what was going on with the carburetor, but something is not working. But that's not hooked up to anything. It's not hooked up to the throttle or anything. It's for like for hot starter. 
Not sure. But we'll check that out too. Um, hmm. That's very, very odd. I don't know why that would not be running right then. Could be a bad spark plug or maybe it's not getting fuel. Alright, let's just see what this diaphragm looks like. Diaphragm appears to be good. No rips or cracks in it. Yeah, that looks all good. All right, we're gonna take a look at the automatic choke. Let's see what's going on there. So when you Put power to these, this should come in like that. So I have a guess we can test that out. All right, so I hooked this up and uh, nothing's happening when I hooked it up to the machine with the battery on. So I'm not sure if it like, senses something in the carburetor or what, but um, yeah, because the choke doesn't come on all the time, but we'll keep that in our minds and you know maybe that's the culprit. All right, carburetor's all cleaned out, good to go. I checked everything in the carb. Um, I checked fuel from the fuel tank over here. That has good flow. I'm gonna dump that out and put fresh fuel in before we attempt to start it again. But I just wanna check the valves here quick. We're gonna take off the intake valve cap and then the exhaust cap back here. And we'll get this in the top dead center. I'm guessing this is the window to see where it's at top dead center. So we'll turn it over with this and uh, we'll see what that looks like. And maybe we'll get the spark plug out and see what that plug looks like as well, if we can get to it. All right, we just get the plug out. You can see the plug is pretty black. So that's what the plug looks like, pretty black. Looks like it's running pretty rich, which I guess is better than lean, but uh, We'll check out the valves next. All right, this Allen is an eight millimeter right here for the little window, for the valves. Let's see if we can get that off. Oh man, <laughs> that was on there. All right, now we're gonna turn this thing over and just look down there and see if we're top dead center. I think I just went by it. Just got this thing to tap dead center. There's a single line. Let's see if I can show you guys what this looks like here. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. It's a single line. There's no T next to it or anything. And we got the valve caps off here. And you can hear the valves are open. Same with the exhaust. So, hey, I, I just measured, they're perfectly to spec, so. It's definitely not the valves causing the issue. All right, we got the compression tester in there. Let's just see what we've got for compression here. Let's see here. The throttle's already open. So we're over 100 easily. Now we're at uh, 190 pounds of compression. So definitely has uh, good compression there. 
All right, so I changed out the old plug with a brand new one. We just got that in there. So maybe it was just a fall plug. We'll see. All right, so I'm draining out the gas right now. There's definitely water in the gas. So good thing we're draining it. And it's super, super cloudy as well. So that could be the problem too. All right, I just started it up again and it's still doing the bogging thing. But I put my hand over the air filter um, housing and uh, it revs out all the way. So obviously it's not getting enough fuel. So it's getting too much air. And um, yeah, and then I see this on the ground. Another dead mouse. Gross. So that came out of that thing again. So that's really, really disgusting. So I don't know if there's like a whole family living in there, but we're gonna have to empty that thing out. <laughs> that's so gross. I think this cover comes off of here and we can probably just vacuum that out of there. But yeah, it's like not getting enough fuel for some reason. All right, so this looks like it was the fix. This piece of tape over the air filter restricting it a little bit more. I'm wondering if the aftermarket air filter in there wasn't as restrictive as the original. And that's why it was doing it. But now it starts up idles and uh, revs up. So I'll show you guys. So that piece of tape was literally the fix. And that carburetor in there, I should have known that, that slide needs that pressure to come in and uh, create the slide to go up. Put a piece of tape over that and uh, seem to fix it. So let's get everything back together and take a look at that oil. All right, just did a quick wipe down on this thing and then I painted the rack, touched that up with some black paint, looking a little bit better. It was just a little rusty in the back. But uh, I want to get these stickers off next. You can see these old stickers are on there. Get those off. And this thing's gonna be looking pretty clean. Oh, here it says 09. Last registered in 09. So it was, in fact, 2009, not 2019. So, hasn't been registered in a while. But uh, the winch does work. Check this out. Running out of battery, but that does work, which is awesome. So, let's get those stickers off, and then we'll attempt to ride this thing. If it shifts and goes smoothly, we'll do the oil change next. All right, let's see if it moves.
right, this thing is looking great and it's driving great. Goes in reverse smoothly, goes in high smoothly, low works perfectly. So this thing is good to go. I took off the plow because I think that makes it look bad. Um, the plow is pretty rough. I might just paint it black and call it a day, but the frame is bent on the plow, so I might cut that apart and try to get some new metal for it. I'll just toss the plow because it's not that nice, but what's nice about it is that it connects to this one, so we'll see. But yeah, it's looking pretty good, looking pretty clean. Let's try to drain the oil out next and get a new filter in there. This thing definitely needs it, so. I think the drain plug is down here. Let's see if I can find it. I think it's down here. It's under here, I think. I believe. Oh, Finny wants to help, it looks like. Finny, you coming to help? You coming to help? <laughs> hey, buddy. Can you find it? Can you crawl underneath here and find it? Ugh. I think it's underneath here. Underneath the second one. So we'll get that bolt out. See how bad that oil is. Alright, that's draining out. As you can see. Alright, let's see what this oil looks like here. Oh, well, I guess it was pretty black. Yeah, it probably hasn't been changed in a while. Oh, it looks really clean. Alright, no metal or anything in there. Alright, just got the old filter off. MGO. EMG. Never heard of that brand before. But, uh, we'll get one of these. I can do the oil change. Doesn't look too bad though. All right, just went to the store, got a k and oil filter. This thing was $18.99. That's crazy, we just oiled up the little O-ring around it. Make sure it's clean on the other side here. Oh, and then we'll twist that guy on. Used to be able to buy these for like 12 bucks. I don't know why it was so expensive. All right, we're using 10 W40. These things are like eight bucks a quart. So 24 bucks going in. This is almost 50 bucks for an oil change, that's crazy. One quart, second quart going in. One more quart to go. And this oil change will be done. All right, oil change is done. Everything's looking good. Let's take this thing for a little test drive. And uh, maybe we'll test out the winch as well. Let's give her a little test drive here. Looks like the battery's slowly charging up. Oh man, that's hard to pull over. I'm gonna probably charge the battery overnight. See if she charges up good. Doesn't appear like my back brake is working. Might have to fix that as well.
that fit through this tight spot right here. Oh yeah. Pretty good. Hit this jump here. <laughs> Reverse works great. Only thing that doesn't work is the back brake, which I have to fix that. Ball works. Alright, we're back here on the property back here. I saw this dead tree back here. And we're going to pull that out and cut that up and use it for firewood. I thought we'd use the winch today to get that out of there. We'll hook up the winch to it and see if we can pull it out. Let's see what the winch can do. Pulled that out, no problem. We're gonna cut this up and get that out of here. Alright, all loaded up. That area is cleared out. Alright, no more dead trees. Well, that wraps up today's video on the 2006 Articat 400 4x4. We'll test this thing out some more. I'll see if I want to keep it for plowing this year. Um, one thing I want to fix is the rear brake on it. I got it um, free here, but it doesn't look like it's pumping too much. So I might have to order up a new master cylinder for it. But other than that, this thing is a solid unit. It uh, runs good, drives good, winch works great, shifts the gear smoothly. It's, it's a really nice machine and it looks really nice. So I'm liking it so far. And I like the option for low for plowing, it's nice. But uh, yeah, the fix ended up being a piece of duct tape over the, <laughs> over the, um, air filter housing which was crazy so anyway guys thanks for watching thanks for subscribing stay tuned for next video and until next time we